Peter. Is this thing on? And welcome. Now before diving into a really average how-to video on how to install a tubeless tyre using the inner tube technique, I'm first going to talk to you about tyres, because, whoa, tyres. <laughs> I just, I mean, as soon as the pubs open, me and the, the everyone, I'm just taught tyres, tyre chat, tyre, tyre, tyre. Tyres. Tyres. Now, much like the rest of the Northern Hemisphere, the British Isle has been dealing with some seriously soggy, wet, cold, miserable, and gloomy conditions over winter. And during that time, the 40 mil Ravager by Maxis has been helping me get through a lot of the local byways and bridleways here in Essex. Byways and bridleways and byways and bridleways. All the hawthorns and blackthorns that are native here in Essex. And the clay has been churned through and I've been carrying on going without too many issues. Not only that, it corners great and has allowed me to start riding a few mountain bike trails in the winter on both single track and in some dual slalom sections as well. An incredible tyre and I'm very happy that I got to run it and test it on behalf of the venture. But now with winter passing and hopefully some dry months to come, I'm here to test out a few semi-slick gravel tyres and things designed to handle the spring and summer months that we're going to experience. Fingers crossed. Starting out with Maxis, they provided me with the Receptor, another 40mm gravel tyre, this time semi-slick and dual compound. Also using their EXO protection, rather than the Silk Shield which was running on the Ravagers I used over winter. What's extra special is that the EXO protection is a level up of protection from Silk Shield, so I'm looking forward to finding out how it handles some of those beasties in Blackthorns and Hawthorns out there on the trails. This tyre runs fast and you can see that from the tread, with some raised shoulders on the edges to handle cornering better and displace some of the rough stuff and the finer gravel you're going to find out there. There is some out there in Essex. There is some out there. But Continental, on the other hand, have provided two different options. The Terra Speed and the Terra Trail. Whilst very similar in appearance, the spacing on the Terra Speed is designed to help you go speedy. <laughs> I see what you did there. The Terra Speed's fine spacing is designed to take you a little bit faster with less resistance. And the Terra Trail's slightly wider spacing is there to handle some of the rougher stuff and the larger, chunky up gravel you're gonna find out there on the trails. Both using the very, very famous black chili compound that Continental are famous for, because they're famous for it, which is very famous, the hot chili, black chili compound. There we go. <clears throat> and both running at around 70 PSI maximum. With that being said, I'm gonna jump straight into the how-to. A few things you've got to note here as well. Before you're setting it up, make sure you have all the pieces and tools you need handy to set up your rims if you haven't done it before. Namely, some tubeless rim tape, a tubeless valve, and of course, make sure your rims can be set up tubeless as well. And tools wise, you're gonna need a way to get your wheel off if it's not quick release, so I'm guessing an Allen key or a hammer, or maybe a hacksaw to cut through the frame. That doesn't make any sense. My watch isn't working. But good thing it's time for fitting tubeless tyres. Oh, maybe it's not. Oh, it is. There's all sorts you need for this. You need two tyres. Pump. Topeak, Joe Blow. Any trap pump will do. A tube. Don't overlook the idea that you need the right valve length. Otherwise you're gonna mess things up straight away. So make sure you can get through the depth of your rims easily. Tire levers, don't forget to get a good tire lever. Otherwise you're gonna snap, you're gonna hurt your hands and you should be swearing left, right and center. Tire sealant. Stands is the go-to. Use this little bad boy though, cause it's got a straw. So if it goes as smoothly as that, eh? No need to do up carbon fork wheels that tight. Need the flating as well. Make sure keep that up top. This is where it can get messy. Smells like PVA glue. I've been back at school. Wipe him down. Yeah. Whatever you've got handy, it ain't gonna scratch things. Old pair of boxes. Stylish as well, aren't they? Real touch. Fashion's my middle name. Can you not tell? Lovely. They always come folded. 
give them a good little bend out. If you're going to photograph your bike lots, you want to make sure that the brand is always above the valve hole. Remember, that gets you five cool points for every picture you take. One thing to make sure you do, is you've got to remove this, because otherwise, you ain't going to go very far by putting a tube in. There's a valve already in the hole. So as you can see here, I'll show you in a minute, but that then is perfect for coming out there. Always check your valve lengths. Pop it on your boxes, hang it on your pedals. These are all catchphrases that are coming out on t-shirts very soon, don't worry about it. So a little bit of air. Enough to give it a shape. No better way to spend your evening, is there? Right, one side's on. I always find it better when you're dealing with tires like this to wear flip-flops and you really feel at home, you know? Right, that's on. See that back position? It's all in the lumbar, perfect. Now, like with any tire, you can make sure that it sits evenly. With tubeless and the rims, that popping noise is a pretty good indicator that it's settled in nicely anyway. There you go. Now, that's it for a bit. So as I mentioned earlier, some valves can be a right nightmare to get off. So I need to get handy with some pliers or even two sets to make sure we get purchased. Sometimes they'll just spin. Then you'll be there for hours thinking you're undoing it. Three days was the last time. Three days when undo a valve. Didn't sleep. Horrible. Here we go. Another one. Full of sealant. Good thing about stands as well, biodegradable. So you haven't got to worry about getting rid of it and it being horrible for the animals and the foxes and the hedgehogs. Always think about the animals. If you're lucky enough to own an extra two tubes, you can do both wheels at the same time. But you can't because this one is too short. Always check your valve lengths. There you have it. Always plan ahead. So there is often talk of it being a really horrible and messy process, but if you do it methodically, you don't mess around, it's very straightforward. And there isn't actually too much gunk to deal with. Also, difficult to know how much exactly to put in, but I'd say as much as you put in a small bowl of granola. Give it a shake, just cause I like percussion, maracas. This is the bit that can catch you out because if you haven't left it long enough, it might not bed in properly. And after you've taken off the inner tube, you'll just end up having a tire that doesn't seat properly when it's tubeless. And that's how you get a mess. So you've got to snap it off, but only snap it off on one side like that. As long as you only remove the tube from one side, it should have a pretty good bed to go back in after. Great excuse for a deep squat as well, right? Okay, tube out. Valve in. Try not to compress a little too much on the floor when you're doing this as well. Because any annoying like adverse pressure is gonna compromise the bead on the other side and you're at the square one. So now, cruise round, edging it on. You shouldn't really need tire levers for this, but it's good to have them just in case. Get your sealant. Four or five cups of tea worth. And spin it round. It goes all the way around the wheel. Really important to make sure that valve is on there properly. Hopefully, we have a tubeless tire ready to go. Safety bear sight. 
Let you mount. Tubeless tyre with the inner tube technique. It went so much smoother than I expected. Obviously it's up to you if you want to wear flip-flops and leggings when you're doing it. Double thumb to recap. I hope you don't mind. I'm going to go over it again. Make sure your valve stem is long enough on the tube for your rim. Get straight in the tube. Always check the rotational direction of your tyre as well. I'm going to zoom in at that 500% and make it really pixelated. And now my face, see, pixelated. And it's really cool. For those extra five points, get the logo of the valve cap. Yes. There's five cool points right there. Right. And again, when you pump it up, make sure your valve's open. Oops. In the idle world, 40 PSI-ish, you start hearing those snaps, possibly. I don't know, or not, not at all even. There you go. Did you see that? Knock it hard enough, your cassette comes off. Well, that's the, uh, the teeth. Okay. XD drivers. The fuck? Should that happen? Got to take a quick picture for the gram. Unseat, one side only. Remember, if you're not removing a tire, you're not in a deep squat. Are you even on a tire? Valve back in. Make sure that the valve is in there. Nice and good as well. Leave a little gap at the bottom so you can get fluid in. <laughs> Bold of granola. Nice cutting all the way around. Now you can seal it off using your thumbs or tie lever, whatever you need to do. Same again. Give it a shake. At least the cassette's staying on. Bosh. So, what did we learn today? Flip-flops, very cool. Leggings, extra cool. Five extra points if your logo matches your valve point. Don't hit your wheels so your XD cassette falls off. But yeah, that's it. Two wheels. And yet it's like four minutes. It took me four weeks.